الحمد لله نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعاد وثمود وقد تبين لكم من مساكيهم وزين لهم الشيطان وعمالهم فصدهم عن سبيل وكانوا مستبصرين Sadaq Allah al-Azim Respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh When coming across the narrations of the Prophets of Allah in the Quran we notice quite a few similarities between them These similarities are most easily realized by the narrations of Prophet Hud and Salih the narrations of these two prophets are coupled together most of the time, usually preceded by the narration of Nuh salam and followed by the narrations of Shu'ib salam and Lut salam The story of Hud salam is introduced in Surah Araf, Surah 7, verse 65 as follows. Audhu billahi min shaitani rajim To the Ar people we sent Hud, one of their own brethren. He said, O oh my people, worship Allah. You have no other God but Him, will you not fear Allah? In the story of Salih al Islam, just a few verses later, in verse 73, all the Shaitan Rajim, to the Thabud people we sent Salih, one of their own brethren, he said, O oh my people, worship Allah, you have no other God but Him. The verses are almost identical. They are also very similar to that which introduced the story of Noah al Islam. <coughs> What is common between all three narrations is firstly the prophets were sent to their own people. They clearly understood the wrongs of the community, having been brought up amongst them, and the community to, could also have a good example to follow in the prophets of Allah. Secondly, the same simple message is taught, worship Allah alone and accept none as his partner. A third similarity between the narration of the Prophet's stories is that they didn't preach the message of Allah for any worldly gain. In Surah Hud, Surah 11, verse 51, we read that Hud salam said, Audhu Bilaim the Shaitani Rajim, O my people, I ask you no reward for this message. My reward is from none but him who created me. Will you not then understand? And in Surah Shura, Surah 26, verse 145, the words of Salih al Islam. Audhu Bilaim in Shaitan Rajim. No reward do I ask you for it. My reward is only from the Lord of the worlds. This is a reminder to us to question ourselves as to our intention behind doing good deeds for the cause of Allah. Are we doing it to seek the reward from Allah in the year after, or is it for some worldly gain, like getting recognition from people or special treatment, etc.? Yet another similarity is in the opposition they received and the taunting from the people. The Ar people called Hud al Islam a fool, as we read in Surah Hud, verse 54. the Prime Shaitan Rajim. We say nothing but that perhaps some of our gods may have seized you with imbecility. And the insults and accusations of the Thabud people to Sali al Islam is found in Surah Qamar, Surah 54, verses 24 and 25. It reads, all the blame of Shaitan Rajim. For they said, What a man, a solitary one among ourselves, shall we follow such a one? Truly should we then be strained in mind and mad. Is it that the message is sent to him of all people amongst us? Nay, he is a liar, an insolent one. Noah alayhi salam as well as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam were insulted in a similar manner. But none of the prophets of Allah reacted to the insults as we would if someone insults us or insults Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa today. The prophets of Allah did not react impulsively to these as they knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was on their side and the accusations against them were baseless. They stuck to their missions and knew that Allah would deal with those people justly. We know that one of the reasons that we have the narrations of the various stories of the previous prophets was to give reassurance to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa In the narration of Salih al-Islam, we come across an incident which is very similar to that 
which we find in the seal of Muhammad The enemies of these prophets both planned to have them assassinated in such a way that no single person or tribe could be held responsible. But both of these plans failed. In Surah Naval, Surah 27, verses 48 to 51, we read, O the Bilal Ibn Shaitan al-Rajim, There were in the city nine men of a family who made mischief in the land and would not reform. They said, Swear a mutual oath by Allah that we shall make a secret night attack on him and his people, and that we shall then say to his heir, when he seeks vengeance, We were not present at the slaughter of his people, and we are positively telling the truth. They plotted and planned, but we too planned, even while they perceived not. Then see what was the end of their plot. Thus that we destroy them and their people, all of them. The communities that Hud and Saleh were sent to were considerably blessed. We see some of the blessings of the Ar people in Surah Surah, verses 132 to 134. Ta'udhu Billahi Minash Yes, fear him who has bestowed on you freely all that you know. Freely has he bestowed on you cattle and sons in gardens and springs. And that the mood was similarly blessed. Just a few verses later, it reads, O Holy Blame the Shaitan Rajim, will you be left secure in the enjoyment of all that you have here? Gardens and springs and cornfields and date palms with spades near breaking with the weight of fruit. They had an abundance of wealth, and it seemed that it was continuing to increase. But this was not all. They were also highly skilled in construction and flaunted their gifts. About the Ar people, we read in Surah Shah verses 128 and 129, Do you build a landmark on every high place to amuse yourselves? And do you get for yourselves fine buildings in the hope of loving the in forever? And in Surah Fajr, Surah 89, verses 6 to 9, all the blame the Shaitan regime, says you not how your Lord dealt with the Ar people of the city of Iram with lofty pillars, the like of which were not produced in all the land. Their focus was on enjoying this worldly life only, hoping to love forever in the buildings they built. They also seemed to erect many structures without any need of them, probably monuments to exhibit their own greatness among each other. It is likely that their skill in construction could not be matched at that time and possibly cannot be matched in certain aspects even today. The Thamud people who succeeded them seemed to develop their construction skills even further. In Surah al raf verse 74, we read, All the Blame the Shaitan Rajim, and remember how we made you inheritors after the Ar people and gave you habitations in the land which you build for yourselves, palaces and castles in open plains, and carve out homes in the mountains. So bring to remembrance the benefits you have received from Allah, and refrain from evil and mischief on the earth. Other than building palaces for themselves, they were able to carve out from the mountains beautiful buildings to live in. There are some examples of building carved out of the mountains in Petra, Jordan. Whether these are the homes of the Thamud that the verses mentioned, we do not know for certain. But it is an example for us of powerful nations that once ruled the land, but who no longer exist. An important point to note in the verse that I have just recited is that the Thamud were not grateful for the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and thus must choose what they had to do mischief on the earth. It is ruins like these that we find in certain areas that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to look at and consider the might of the nations that built them and where it led them to in the end. Surah Ankabut, Surah 29, verse 38 tells us, Audhu Bilal ibn Shaitan al-Rajim, Remember also the Ard and the Thamud clearly will appear to you from the traces of their buildings, their fate. The evil one made their deeds alluring to them and kept them back from the path, though they were gifted with intelligence and skill. Many times in the Quran we come across verses telling us to contemplate on the signs around us in nature. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to contemplate on the signs around us of the ruins that civilizations have left behind and where we can end up if we follow similar paths to them. 
In Surah Ghafir, Surah 40, verse 82, we read, O the Bilaimin Shaitan Rajim, do they not travel through the earth and see what was the end of those before them? They were more numerous than these and superior in strength and in the traces they have left behind in the land. Yet all that they accomplished was of no profit to them. All the blessings and amazing skills that the Ad and the Mood people had resulted in them occupying positions of power. The Ad people abused the power they had to bully others in getting their way. They were tyrants in the land, showing no, no mercy, as we read in Surah Surah Rock, verse 130. All the And when you exert your strong hand, you do it like men of absolute power. This bullying of the weaker people led these people to believe that they were untouchable. It may have been true that no other peoples at that time were of any match to them, but they forgot that the one who created them has more power than them. They therefore rejected the teachings and warnings of Ula Islam and paid the ultimate price. In Surah Fusilat, Surah 41, verse 15 and 16, we read, O the Bilaimna Shaitan Rajib, now the Ad behaved arrogantly through the land against all truth and reason and said, Who is superior to us in strength? What? Did they not see that Allah who created them was superior to them in strength? But they continued to reject our signs. So he sent against them a furious wind through days of disaster, that we might have that you might give them a taste of a penalty of humiliation in this life. But the penalty of a year after will be more humiliating still and they will find no help. <clears throat> it is quite sad that history keeps repeating itself. The Arab people may have left thousands of years before the revelation of the Quran. The oppression of the weaker people continued after them by other nations and people like Pharaoh and is still happening till today. We constantly see the superpowers of the world invading other countries for their own selfish needs and don't care about the innocent lives that they take, nor of the thousands of people that get displaced from their homes. The Tamur people also let the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed on them get to their heads. They were arrogant and thought that everything belonged to them by right. They were selfish and greedy of all the blessings and resources around. They also rejected the teachings and warnings of Salih alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them a camel as a sign for them, as we read in Surah Qamar, verse 27. Of the Bilaim al-Shaytan al-Rajim. He said, Yah is a she camel. She has a right of watering, and you have a right of watering, severally on a day appointed. Touch her not with harm, lest the penalty of a great day seize you. And tell them that the water is to be divided between them, each one's right to drink being brought forward by suitable turns. But they called to their companion, and he took a sword in hand and a hamstrung out. Ah, how terrible was my penalty and my warning. From the verses of the Quran, there is nothing out of the ordinary with this camel, except that it had its own day of drinking to that of the Tamur people. It was quite a simple sign for them. People usually look for a sign from Allah that that is out of the ordinary, like that of Musa Islam to Firon. Does seem quite ordinary, much like the Quran may seem to some people. The lesson here is not on the unusual nature of the sign, but taking heed of it. The Tamud, though, could not stand sharing resources which they thought they owned, and thus killed the camel and rejected the sign of Allah, thus incurring his punishment. Another crime of the Tamud people was that they chose not to follow the clear guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed them. Surah Fusilat verse 17 tells us of the Bilaimna Shaitan regime. As to the Thamud, we gave them guidance, but they preferred blindness of heart to guidance. So the stunning punishment of humiliation seized them because of what they had earned. This is a warning for all of us as well. We are quite blessed to have the Quran with us today, unchanged over the centuries and translated in many languages. It would be a crime on our part not to make the effort to understand the guidance it contains firsthand, but to rely, to rely on others to tell us or seek guidance through other sources. The arrogance of the art people knew no bounds. They thought they, that they were invincible because of the power and strength that they had possessed. 
They challenged Hud al Islam to bring the punishment that he warned them against, thinking that, they could, that it could do them no harm. In Surah Ahqaf, Surah 46, verse 22 and 23 reads as follows They said, Have you come to us in order to turn us aside from our gods? Then bring upon us the calamity with which you do threaten us, if you are telling the truth. He said, The knowledge of when it will come is with Allah alone. I proclaim to you the mission on which I have been sent, but I see you are people in ignorance. The Thabud we see were not much different. In Surah Araf, verse 77, we read, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Yerujim. Then they hamstrung the she camel and incidentally defy the order of the Lord, saying, O Saleh, bring, bring about your threats if you are a messenger of Allah. <coughs> the art people never believed that the punishment of Allah would come. And when they saw it coming, much like the people of Noah Islam before them, they thought it was another blessing of Allah on them. In Surah Ahqaf, verses 24 and 25, we read, the Blame Shaitani Rajim. Then when they saw the penalty in the shape of a cloud traversing the sky, coming to meet their valleys, they said, This cloud will give us rain. Nay, it is the calamity you are asking to be hastened. A wind where it is a grievous penalty. Everything will be destroyed by the command of its Lord. Then by the morning, they, nothing was to be seen but the ruins of their houses. Thus they re recompense those given to sin. Further detail is found in Surah Haqqa, uh, Surah 69, verses 6 to 8. All the blame of the shaitan regime. And the ah, they were destroyed by a furious wind, exceedingly violent. He made it rage against them seven nights and eight days in succession so that you could see the whole people lying prostrate in its path, as they had been roots of hollow palm trees tumbled down. Then see you any of them left surviving. The Thamud people seem to have been given various forms of punishment. In Surah Araf was sent to a toll of an earthquake. All the Bilaim Nashaytani regime. So the earthquake took them unawares, and they lay prostrate in their homes in the morning. Surah Haqqa, verse 5, tells us of a terrible storm. But at the mood, they were destroyed by a terrible storm of thunder and lightning. And Surah Qamar, verse 31, mentions a mighty blast. For we sent against them a single mighty blast, and they became like dry stubble used by one who pens cattle. The prophets, Hul al-Islam and Sali al-Islam, did their duties in conveying the message of Allah to their people, and were thus saved along with whoever else believed in their message. We have seen many parallels between the two narrations and many of the crimes that the people of the Al and the Mood were guilty of, uh, that we find pre prevalent in nations as well as individuals today. The misuse of the gifts of Allah, the greed, arrogance, opulence, oppression of the weak, and ridiculing of the doers of good are still commonplace. These stories are meant as a warning to be heeded for us today, as it was a warning to the Quraysh at the time of the Prophet. I will conclude with a verse from Surah Ahqaf, verse number 26. And we have firmly established them in a prosperity and power which we have not given to you, O Quraysh. And we had endowed them with faculties of hearing, seeing, heart, and intellect. But of no profit to them were their faculties of hearing, seeing, and heart, and intellect, when they went on rejecting the signs of Allah. And they were completely encircled by which they used to mock it. Shukran, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.